this is Spanish 101. This is beginner Spanish. Uh, what we're going to do today, uh, what we're going to do today is uh, quite a lot. We may not get get it all done uh, uh, today. We, some of it may carry over to next week. We're going to start with presentaciones, uh, in, introductions, how to introduce yourself, and we're going to look at three aspects of introducing yourself. Uh, Como estamos? How are we doing? Quienes somos? Who are we? And donde estamos? Where are we? Then we're going to go over the, the salon de classes, the classroom. We've got a strange virtual classroom. Uh, we're going to go a little bit over el alfabeto, uh, the alphabet, los sonidos, and of course, we'll go over the uh, course overview. Um, I need to, when I do this, it's hard to see the chat, so I will just try and make that available to me. Oh, okay, everyone is saying, okay. I get, everyone's saying, hi, hola, buenos dias. I see some of you have got a little bit of Spanish already. Um, that's cool. Uh, if if you know nothing, that's also cool. This is a course designed for people who who come from it with zero. So don't feel intimidated by the fact there's at least a few people who already know how to say buenos dias or hola or whatever. Como están? Como están? Hola. Hola. Como están? Están bien? Sí. O oh. están nerviosos? Quizás nerviosos. O oh. están mal. ¿Cómo están? ¿Cómo están ustedes? How are you all? ¿Están bien? ¿Nerviosos? ¿O mal? ¿Cómo estoy? ¿Cómo estoy? Yo, yo, yo estoy bien o mal? Bien, estoy bien. ¿Y tú? Tú, tú estás bien, nervioso, nerviosa o mal. Todos estamos nerviosos un poco y emocionados. We're all nervous, at least a little bit. I certainly am. And I hope excited about what we're doing in uh, the rest of the semester. Como estoy? How am I? Como están? How are you all? Como estás? How are you? Quien soy? Quien soy? Yo? Yo? Soy John. Mi nombre es John. Me llamo John. So these are three different ways of saying the same thing. Remember, you know, there's no one way to say what you want to say. There are always options. Soy John. Mi nombre uh, es John. Uh, y me llamo John. Yeah, the, these, the slides will definitely be, be available. I just got that question through the chat from uh, Fair. Definitely. Again, I'm not entirely sure what I'll do with the recordings, but I will definitely make the slides available. Okay, so so don't worry about that. Um, that doesn't mean you shouldn't pay attention, obviously, now, but the slides will be made, made available so you can go back over and, and see what we covered, for sure. So at the moment, what we're covering is, ¿Quién soy? Who am I? Soy John. Mi nombre es John. Me llamo John. Three different ways of saying the same thing. Um, the upside down question mark does nothing. It's just what you do in Spanish. No pronunciation. We'll talk about pronunciation later. Okay. Good question, Tyler. All questions are good questions, mind you. But I like that one, especially. Oh. Now note that we're using a different verb to say how we are. Como estoy. Oh, 
Okay, great. So that's a. Uh, I will not put these up before I fixed any mistakes I've made it on this. Okay, and who we are. That's meant to say who we are. Okay, uh, uh, that's a typo. So we're using different verbs to say how we are, como estoy, and who we are. We'll learn much more about this in the future, but it's one of the significant differences between Spanish and English. Quién soy? Who am I? Soy John. Mi nombre es John. Me llamo John. Me llamo John. Mi nombre es John. Yo soy de Manchester, Inglaterra. Este es Manchester. Soy de, soy de Manchester. Viva, Man Viva Manchester United. Gracias. <laughs> soy de Manchester, Inglaterra, pero vivo en Vancouver. Soy de Manchester, Inglaterra, vivo aquí en Vancouver. Soy profesor de español de estudios hispánicos. Hablo español e inglés. Hablo las dos lenguas, la lengua de español y la lengua el inglés. Me llamo John, mi nombre es John, soy de Manchester, Inglaterra, vivo en Vancouver, soy profesor de estudios hispánicos y hablo español e inglés. Ok, ahora vamos a conocer a, a Fernanda, nuestro, nuestra TA, y tenemos un pequeño video. Ok. Hola. Hola, buenos días. Buenos días. ¿Cómo te llamas? Me llamo María Fernanda. ¿Y tú? María Fernanda. Yo me llamo John. John Beasley Murray. Mucho gusto, John. ¿Cómo estás? Encantado, María Fernando. Estoy bien. ¿Y tú? ¿Cómo estás? Yo estoy muy bien, muchas gracias. María Fernanda, ¿de dónde eres? Yo soy de México, Puebla. ¿Y tú, de dónde eres? Yo, yo soy de Manchester. Oh. Manchester, <ríe> Inglaterra. Pero vivo en Canadá, en Vancouver. ¿Y tú, María Fernanda, dónde vives? Yo también vivo en Vancouver, Canadá. ¿Y qué eres aquí en Vancouver? Ahorita soy estudiante de UBC. ¿Eres estudiante? ¿También sí. profesora? Sí, también profesora. ¿Tú qué eres, John? Soy profesor. Ya no estudio. Soy <risa> Um, ¿Y qué lenguas hablas, María Fernanda? Yo, John, hablo inglés y español. ¿Tú qué lenguas hablas, John? Yo también. Hablo inglés, hablo español. Nada más. Bueno, encantado, María Fernanda. Mucho gusto, encantada. Nos vemos. Adiós, John. Que tengas un buen día. Tú también, que tengas muy bonito día. Chao. Chao. So, the first observation is that what we're doing here, well, we're repeating a lot, but we're also imitating. We're listening to hear what other people are doing. 
and and trying to figure out how we're supposed to respond, a sort of call and response. So I say, ¿Cómo estás? And you say, okay, I've got to figure out the possible options, but bien or mal or whatever. Then I'll say, ¿Cómo estás? And you'll say, estoy bien, estoy mal, and so on and so forth, okay? So this kind of repetition and imitation is, is how we're learning language. We learn through figuring out these patterns, finding out how we can fit in, right? How we can find a place for ourselves within them. So I want to suggest that you get this chance to sort of make, construct yourself. This, this is the most optimistic view of what you might be doing this semester, not just learning Spanish, but creating a new Spanish speaking you. So not just quien soy, who am I, pero quien serás. Who are you going to be? Let me also talk a little bit now about this online uh, environment. I'm about to send you to groups so that you basically get to meet each other and use the same patterns, the same models that um, I've just been going through with you and that you saw uh, Maria Fernanda and I using the video. Um, we're online. I don't know whether you've chosen to be online or, or not, whether you can't come back to Vancouver or this is your preferred way of doing things. Um, I'm not entirely sure that this is what I would always choose. I think that personal face-to-face -face thing is important too, um, but we'll try to make the most of it and, and make the, uh, take advantage of the possibilities that this online environment um, offers. So we'll be meeting twice a week on Zoom on this link, always the same link. Um, I think you can get, I'm still figuring out Canvas a little bit, I got to tell you. Um, I think you can get into Zoom through Canvas. Um, I think there's an easy way of doing it, and I'm going to try and make it easy, but everyone who's here has already figured it out, so that's great. I guess there may be some people to whom, who haven't figured it, and they will never hear this. Oh, I guess they'll hear, they'll see the recording or something. But we'll meet twice a week on Zoom, always the same link and the same scheduled times, uh, 11 to 12.30 or a little before uh, 12.30 every Tuesday or Thursday. As I've already said, I encourage you to use the chat. Um, I will try to monitor it, um, but so that it doesn't distract me too much, uh, Maria Fernanda is definitely on it and passing on things to me when, when necessary. I encourage you if, you, if you feel okay with it, to turn your cameras on. The number one reason for this is so that I don't go crazy. So I don't know who Bonaventure is, but I see you and you see me and I feel seen. So, you know, it, it makes me feel, it makes me feel like I'm talking to humans, you know? And I know some of you are sort of coming in and on on the video and that's, that's okay too. Um, but the more faces I see, the more human I feel. And uh, thank you, Chris. Okay, that's good. Now, there are reasons why you might not want to have the camera on uh, uh, sometimes. Um, I don't know if things are happening around you or, or if you're worried about bandwidth or something. I understand that, so it's not, it's not compulsory. But, um, but do it for me, if nothing else, but also do it for you because I, I, I do think it helps you to feel more part of things and, and part of this little community that we're trying to construct here um, I think it helps you to focus a little bit. I actually do think it, it's good for you. Um, but again, I'm, I'm, I'm asking for me too, okay? Um, and when you're in the, we're gonna use breakout rooms. I especially think you should turn the cameras on in the breakout rooms when there's just four or five of you in, in a room. Again, to sort of humanize that thing, that uh, encounter, right? And so again, in a minute, we'll be using the breakout rooms to, uh, so that you can get to know each other. And uh, I, I think if at all possible, I encourage you to put your uh, cameras on. And then the other thing, or the final thing about breakout rooms is use them, right? I mean, speak Spanish as far as possible. Um, but even for instance, a breakout group we're just about to, um, uh, to we're, we're gonna do in a few minutes. If you run out, of, if you've done the things you've been asked to do, chat to each other, you know, in English, if necessary, right? Get to know, the, you know each other a little bit and, and we'll sort of compensate for that kind of being able to whisper to your classmate or whatever if you're in person in uh, on UBC or in a, in a classroom, okay? So don't let that just be dead space and nothing going on in, in the breakout rooms. If you finish what you're being asked to do, then just, I don't know, you can talk about how awful the teacher is or something like that. There's something you can talk about, I'm sure. Okay, uh, 
Uh, one more thing I want to do. Okay, we've got we've got these little uh, uh, rectangles, and to just give you a sense of um, of the environment, even if it may be uh, a strange environment in which we find myself, I'm having to undo some. So just to know where I'll be coming to you from, here is uh, what I sometimes call my little back cave in East Vancouver. Um, there's too many books. Uh, this is what is around me, mess basically. But you know, there's a sort of logic to some of the mess, and it it's kind. Of, it used to be a shed, so you go out of the out of the door, and uh, you are immediately. There's a garden behind us, which is also a mess. Some bikes, and uh, if you wanted to go into the house, you'd go up there, and uh, somewhere up there is the house. And in this behind this door, we are never going to go in it. Is my mother-in-law. But she's gone out now, so she can't hear us. All right. So I wondered if one or two of you um, might want to also volunteer, <coughs> pardon me, to show us around a little bit. Las presentaciones. Huh? What you're going to do is follow a five-point model provided and introduce yourselves in the small, in the small group. Hola. Hi. Me llamo. My name is, my, I'm called uh, John, for example. Soy de, I'm from Inglaterra, Canada, Los Estados Unidos, India, Mexico, Holanda. No sé. Mm -hmm. Soy de, where are you from? Vivo en, mm -hmm. yo vivo en Vancouver, pero quizás Toronto. Donde seas, wherever you are. Soy estudiante. Soy know, mesero. That's a um, waiter. Soy, again, where you can't find the Spanish words, you use, use English words, obviously, at this stage. Y hablo, las lenguas que hablo, inglés, francés, italiano, alemán, german, japonés, chino, árabe. Que sea. Ok, ¿cómo te llamas? ¿De dónde eres? ¿Dónde vives? ¿Qué eres? ¿Qué lenguas hablas? Ok, so I'm going to give you uh, about 10 minutes to do that in your, room, in your breakout rooms using this model to find out more about your classmates. And then if you use up those 10 minutes again, feel free to get, each, uh, get, get to know each other in English. And again, perhaps do this. Where are you coming from? Where are you right at this very moment? Uh, don't discuss. Um, okay, here's some uh, useful phrases that AI may use or you may want to use in uh, in these classes in the chat or, or whatever. Um, on the left are sort of the phrases I might use. On the right are some of the phrases you might use. Atención, por favor. Attention, please. Trying to get your attention. Grupitos, these are little groups that we've been using, the breakout rooms. When I speak of Pagina o Capitulo, we're going to talk about the textbook in a minute. That's the page or the chapter of the textbook. If I ask you to, if I ask you, lee, read, contesta, answer, I might ask you to repeat. Repite, por favor. Otra vez. Again. And see, si, yes or no. I might say it's correcto, it's okay, incorrecto, you haven't got it right. I might say, muy bien, bien hecho. Well done, y gracias, thanks. On the right, are some phrases you might want to use. No entiendo, I don't understand. Tengo preguntas, I've got questions. Estoy perdido, o estoy perdida. I'm lost. ¿En qué página estamos? What page are we on? Explain, explícame, por favor. Repite, por favor. Some of the things you might be saying might be the same things that I'm saying. Repeat, por favor. Repeat, please. Say it again. Otra vez. One more time. ¿Cómo se dice? How do you say? Ahora entiendo. Now I understand. And then you might want to say, gracias, if you reach that point. Um, I'm just checking the chat here. Okay, that was from uh, uh, last time. Okay. So, um, again, well, the, the slideshow will definitely be made available. Okay. So you can, you can 
revise and look over these useful phrases uh, for the class. Um, I, I'd like to uh, talk about the alphabet, el alfabeto. Um, we'll talk about the textbook. I know that not all of you might have got, um, access to the textbook yet. I, I will be giving you page numbers so you can refer to it. Um, the Spanish alphabet is a little bit different from the English alphabet. It looks mostly the same, but let me point out uh, a, a letter that we don't have, this ñ, as in eh, España, for instance, or mañana, 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 two words you might know, Spain uh, and tomorrow. So it, it's, um, it, it's pronounced like an N-Y, essentially, together, ñ. Yeah. Uh, there's a few letters uh, that we share, but uh, basically hardly used in Spanish. You'll get very few W's and, actually, and very few K's, except in loan words, in, in words that, that come from uh, other languages. Okay. Um, that's that's uh, en year. And there's a, uh, in the textbook, there's a, a, an exercise or a, I don't know, an opportunity to, to listen to. Uh, the alphabet being spoken out, A, B, C, D, E, F, E, G, and so on. So that's the alphabet. Um, again, Enye is a separate letter. Sometimes people treat, there's three other combinations of letters that are sometimes treated also as separate letters. Ch, C-H, which is always a soft ch, like in church. It's never a hard ch as in chorus, for instance, in English or loch. Uh, double l, which is actually pronounced in different ways. We'll talk about pronunciation in a second. In it's pronounced in different ways in different countries, different Spanish-speaking countries. But um, we'll just say for now, you can't go wrong if you pronounce it like a y. So como me llamo. We've already seen that. Como me, como te llamas? Me llamo. That's the double l. Uh, essentially pronounced uh, as, a, as a Y. And double R is a sort of rolled R, which actually I can't do very well, um, uh, is sometimes treated as if it were a, a separate letter. Because otherwise, there are very few double letters, uh, unlike in, in, in English. Very few times when you'll see the same letter together doubled um, with another. And again, K and W are rare and used the only in, in loan words taken from other, other languages. There's something else in the chat. Let's have a look. Loan words. <coughs> Sorry, Chris. So loan, borrowed from, from other languages. Okay, and I've got the same question from, from Fair, from Fernanda, okay? Excuse my accent, my British sort of Mancunian accent. It's not as Mancunian, it's not as much of a Manchester accent as it used to be. In, uh, in English. Okay, and then, then the sounds, los sonidos, okay? And again, this is something for you to consult. It, Spanish is actually very easy to pronounce once you've figured out the rules. There are very, very few, um, there are basically no exceptions to the rules. Um, and there's a, only a few instance, instances or a few cases where you might mix up uh, different letters. Very easy to pronounce uh, and very easy to spell, therefore, as well, compared to English, for instance. Um, we'll go over this um, uh, again later, too, but I want to get this up there, get this on the slide uh, so you can uh, look at it. A C is, is a hard C, like cake or cat, except when it is before, as my little BF is before, before E or I. And then it's soft, like uh, sink or ceiling, or I don't know what other times we have we have soft seas in this as well. I can't think of any. Ceiling is the only thing that comes to me. Okay, so before e and i, it's a hard c. K before uh, no, except for before. Uh, normally it's it's a, a hard c, except before e and i when it's a soft c. Something simple similar happens with g. So G is normally hard, like goat or get or grandmother, or I don't know, except before E and I when it's pronounced like H in ham. I'm going to give you some examples of, of words that use these, by the way, in a minute. So, so don't worry too much. 
H is silent, not pronounced. Okay. J has the sound of an English H, again, as in ham. Uh, we've got ny, which is, as I say, this ny sound, like canyon, which we get in mañana or España. Hmm? Ch, again, is, is always soft, like in church. Uh, and again, the the, e, the double L sound, it actually does, you, you can hear, for instance, someone from Argentina will, will pronounce an, a double L sound in e, e, very differently from someone in, I don't know, uh, Andalusia or Madrid for instance, but for, for our purposes, we'll just say it sounds like a Y. Okay. Uh, a B and a V sound very close to each other. Okay. And it depends a little bit on their uh, position in the, uh, in the word. Okay. So especially a V at the beginning of a word sounds more like a, a B. So Vancouver uh, in Spanish, it, it sounds like you're saying with a B, Vancouver. Uh, and then if you have an I and a vowel afterwards, the I sounds like a Y. Again, I'm going to give you some examples of that in a second. And if you have a U before another vowel, it sounds like a W. Uh, that'll be easier to show than to explain. Okay, I'll show it. Every syllable is pronounced. And apart from H, there's no silent letters or silent syllables. Okay, again, I'll, 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 I'll give you examples of that in, in one second. <clears throat> this is a little bit more complicated, but again, it, it, it follows the rule. Keep this, like, we refer back to this uh, uh, slide. Um, uh, if it, a word that ends in a vowel, N or S, have to stress the accent on the next to last syllable, not the last, the next to last syllable, okay? like uh, yamo, okay, the stress is on yam, mo, or minuto, minute, okay, it's the next to last one, minuto, the stress is on the next to last syllable, but if it ends in any other letter, essentially any other consonant, then it's stressed on the final syllable, the last syllable, like, um, uh, again, I'll show you some uh, instances of that in a second. Uh, I'm thinking of words that we've uh, used already, um, but I can't. I have a I have a page of words in a second. Way uh, I'll show you all that, unless there is an accent. So this is different from French. If you learn French, for instance, accents change the sound. In Spanish, the accent tells you where the stress is. Okay, so the sounds are always the same. The accent tells you which syllable you need to stress. This will be this will become clearer. I hope will come clearer as we go along. But with the list of words that I'm about to give you, okay. So on, on the left are a few countries. So España. That's an instance of the ñ. Okay, España. We have to stress on the second syllable because the last syllable is a vowel. Okay, España. Colombia. What we have here is an I before a vowel. So that I is like a Y. It's not Colombia or Colombia. It's Colombia, right? That I is like a, uh, is, is, is basically like a Y. Uh, with the country Peru, normally uh, a word ending in a vowel, the stress should be here on the next to last syllable, the penultimate syllable. What the, this little accent is telling us is no, actually, we're going to go against the normal rules. The stress is going to be there. It's going to be on the final syllable. So instead of Peru, which it would be without the accent, is Peru. Okay. So uh, I, again, um, it's all very regular. And whenever there's an exception, Spanish wants to tell you what the exception is so that you don't get confused. Right. Uh, Argentina, this is an example of that G, because it's before an E, being a soft, sounding like an H. So it's not, in English we have Argentina, J, like a J sound, right? Uh, in, in Spanish, no, Argentina, okay? We've got an H sound. 
Canada. Okay, what's another example of the of the of the uh, the accent telling you what the stress is? You know, normally, if a if a word ends in a vowel, uh, you put the stress here. In Canada. <coughs> but no, it's telling you no, 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 not for this one. We got Canada. Again, the sound is the same. The the accent doesn't change. Um, it doesn't change the sound at all. It just tells you where the stress should be. Puerto Rico. What this is showing us is the use of that U as a W. So it's not Puerto Rico. The, the U is Puerto Rico. Okay, before a vowel. Right? Um, Cuba. Note that this is, uh, I, I think I put this as a different from how we say it in English. In English, we, we, we pronounce as if it's C-Y, right? Cuba, but no, in, in, in Spanish, you know, your C before a vowel, um, unless, it, uh, unless it's E and I, is always the same hard C, so Cuba, Cuba. Mm -hmm. Nicaragua, we've got another instance of the U as a W, and Honduras, we're not pronouncing that H. No H's get pronounced. So it's not Honduras, which is what we have what we what we'd have in English. We pronounce those H's, or we sometimes do, or we I don't know. English is a mess, right? Spanish is all like, okay, this is how it does. Honduras. Don't pronounce that H. And then um, okay, these are just some more regular uh, words to give instance of other things. So I don't know if we saw this as an English word, we might think it's like clase or something like that. I don't know what we'd say. Classe, we pronounce every syllable. This is two syllables. Cla se. Hmm? Which means class, libro. I'm not sure why I had that one there, but I did. Okay, here's an example of a of a word that ends in a in a consonant, which is not N or S, it ends in an R. So the stress is going to be here on the final thing. Aprender. That's uh, to, to learn. Aprender. The stress is here. Mm -hmm. uh, alumno. These are just words. Everything's words, um, which means uh, pupil, uh, compañero, uh, companion, comrade. Again, we've got the enye. Okay, we're going to skip. Okay, callar. Okay, this is an instance of that double. Uh, double L, E, Y, sounds like a Y. Kaya. And we've also got the stress on the final syllable. Uh, professor, playa, which means beach. That's an important word. Maybe that's why I had that there for you. Okay. So you're not going to, you're going to get this through practice. Okay. And, 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 and through speaking and through listening. Um, but refer to these, uh, refer to these slides, I think, in the, in the future. Um, we're going to do a sort of overview of the course next, but any questions about what we've done so far? Either in the chat or sticking your hands up. Let's see if I can even see if hands are stuck up. Okay. All right. Um, okay, a little bit more about the course and, and the requirements. Uh, so again, this is this is from nothing. I, I see already in the chat and from some of your responses and so on that some of you have learned a little bit of Spanish already. Um, that's cool. That that's great. That's excellent. Um, but it's not expected or required. So for those of you who really feel you don't know anything, then don't worry. We we will go as slowly as uh, as we need to. Uh, let me just say that it may seem quite easy in the first few weeks. Um, because you you know a lot is kind of in in your short term memory, but towards the end of the uh, end of the semesters we build on what we've done and we start putting things together. Uh, if if you haven't really cemented those first um, uh, these first sort of lessons these first things that you're learning in the first few weeks, um, then in other words if you haven't put it into the longer term memory, then it may get a little bit more tricky. Okay, so that's a sort of little warning. You may think for the first few weeks this is an easy class. It's not a terribly difficult class. Don't worry about that. But you may think it is easier than it is. Okay, so I'm just that's a little warning to make sure that you cement the uh, the things that you do. We do in the first few weeks because it, it gets complicated and it gets complicated 
when, when we start fitting different pieces of, of it together. Um, it's uh, we're, 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 uh, the idea of the course is, is all the different aspects of language, uh, listening, uh, speaking, reading, and writing. Um, the focus is on sort of common situations, who and where we are, um, the family, for instance, daily life, routines. Uh, these are the things that we cover uh, in this course. Um, it is it is paired with the uh, 102, which um, actually uses the same textbook. So this is the textbook. I actually have a physical copy of the textbook, um, but I understand that uh, that is not available to you. Uh, you get your textbook through Canvas. It's linked in with Canvas. Okay. Um, you get an access code, which you buy through the UBC bookstores website, though I'm also told, I don't see these things from your point of view, if you have any questions, talk to me, that if you enter it through Canvas, it will also give you the chance to purchase the code. Now, if you're still sort of wavering and not sure if this is the course for you, there's a, a free access trial, which lasts until, I believe it's until the end of the drop ad period. So for the next, I, th I think it's all the way till September the 21st, but certainly for the next week or so, okay? So if you're not immediately sure um, well, about this class, it'll make me sad. I love you already, but then, you know, so be it. Or you might think that actually you have done some Spanish and you're, you're ready for, uh, you know, this is, this may seem not the right level or, or whatever reasons. Everyone's got their reasons. Um, so you do not have to pay for the uh, textbook immediately. Chris, the there is a physical textbook, there is, um, but the bookstore does not have it, is my understanding, okay? Um, uh, partly the reason is because what you get when you enter the site, the textbook site, is also this thing called MindTap. Don't ask me why it's called MindTap, it's what they're calling it, but which is where you've got exercises, um, both exercises which are, for, are part of your grade, and there's also tons of like practice exercises. So the whole thing is, they've done it is sort of yeah, bound in with this online sort of assessment site. Okay, so so when I talk about mind tap and exploration, is it's all kind of the same, and and if you you know if the you will use the same book ebook or whatever for 102. So once you've bought it now, uh, and if you go on and do 102 next semester, you've already bought all the course materials that you need for 102. At these, essentially we do the first half in this course and in 102, you do the second half, okay? So for what that's worth. Um, the syllabus is on Canvas. Um, uh, there's a link to the PDF version of the syllabus on the first page when you when you when you get in, which has got lots more details. I'm not going to go through all the details uh, today. Um, I encourage you to do that before the uh, the next class. Someone's on the chat. Let me just see what they say. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, uh, this is this is the uh, this is the bit that people I don't know one of the bits that people like to know, which is about the uh, assignments. Um, so you get uh, some for participation that includes your participation in class, showing up, and so on and so forth. Um, but also, and oh gosh, sorry, oops, get back. Uh, asynchronous participation. That's I, I'll, I will tell you more later about. What that means is basically sort of extra exercises um, and showing that you're sort of keeping up practice or participating in the discussion, for instance, uh, that we might have on, on Canvas. Um, there'll be various ways in which to have that sort of extra participation. Uh, because this is such a, this is quite a big course on Zoom, uh, obviously apart from in the small groups, in the breakout groups, there's not much chance for you to participate in the, in the main bit. So, uh, instead of having participation just just being pegged to these Zoom sessions, um, there, there's this sort of a, another way of assessing the amount of work that you're and that you're putting into it. Okay. Uh, then 
you have some uh, assignments which are due through the semester. The details of that are on the syllabus, right? Um, but they, the idea is that they test different, different again, different aspects of language. The, the first one is a, 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 a written assignment. Then you've got, you make a little video, um, a multimodal that's you sort of do, basically prepare a kind of presentation and do uh, an oral interview. Again, if you look at the syllabus, not only does it tell you a little bit more about what exactly is involved in those assignments, it also tells you when they, they're due. So the first one is due in, I think, three weeks time. I actually don't have the syllabus. I, I can only have one thing on the screen at the, at the, at the time. But it, 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 you know, uh, you know, it's signaled uh, ahead of time. And we'll also you know, deal with the details of what each assignment uh, requires. Um, you know, in the in the run up to that assignment. Okay, so don't need to worry too much. Uh, then, uh, pretty much every week, there are also exercises set for you on this mind tap. Right, this is the this is the uh, platform. This is the I don't even know what to call it. This is the thing, the site, right, which is associated with the with the textbook. Um, and uh, there are exercises to do uh, uh, pretty much every week. Um, again, the syllabus will show when the, there's a few weeks when, when there's no mind tap exercises. Uh, and we'll go into mind tap in, in a minute. So it should be pretty obvious. So I can show you more or less how it works. Though I will tell you, I'm also learning myself. Um, uh, but that's something you do throughout the, throughout the semester. And then basically, we're calling these combined tests. These are midterms and a final exam. Okay. And so uh, there's a midterm on the first couple of chapters, a midterm on the second couple of chapters, if, and then the, the exam, which is on everything. Okay, so that's the assignments. Again, there's more detail in, in the syllabus, which is uh, the PDF document, which I also sent you, right? I think I, everyone who was, I know a few people have registered at the last minute, but everyone who was registered when I sent out the email, was it yesterday or the day before? Um, will have got the syllabus, I think. Is that right? Can I have a thumbs up or a yes in the chat to say that at least some people will have got that syllabus? Yes, okay, okay I see a thumb up. I see more, I see some yeses. Okay, good. Uh, well, and or have got it. Some people have had trouble getting into Canvas. I think it's the people who've just, who've written, who've just like registered yesterday or the day before, which is also a reason why I sort of waited to send out the information because there's churn, right? People come in and people, people come out. Um, if you're still having problems, write to me or write to Maria Fernanda and I'll try, I'll do my best to figure out um, technical issues such as that, okay? I don't know how many of you are first years, in which case, welcome to UBC, by the way, I should have said that, okay? Um, uh, you, will, you will see a lot more of Canvas if you're, if you're a first year and this is the, whatever. And so, you know, this is more as you know, Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have our class. Um, we're trying to both big group activities and small group activities. Increasingly, I'll be using more Spanish. I've used a lot of English today, um, just because I'm doing a lot of explanation, explaining things. Um, but um, the idea is to try to construct a, a atmosphere and environment that is mostly Spanish speaking. Okay. If so I'll be using more and more Spanish. And, and please, if there's things you don't understand, right? If I'm going too fast, stick your hand up, uh, put it in the chat, ask questions. Um, uh, absolutely, don't feel, don't feel everyone else knows and I don't and I'm stupid. That's almost never true. Almost never true. It's a common thing that people think, students think, especially people think actually as a whole, but you're very, you know, it is very, very seldom true. Normally, if you have that question, someone else has that question too, and they're just too shy to ask. So um, uh, ask your questions. And then on the Thursdays, I'll, I'll preview what's, what's coming up the following week. In the meantime, there's uh, Canvas and, uh, and, uh, and Zoom. I, I'm gonna be offering some other opportunities for, for participation. Again, I'll talk about that as we, as we go along. Okay, to finish off, a concluir. What have we done today? Well, we learned a bit about each other, I hope. I hope the breakout rooms 
again, I hope it was, I hope you use those, use those breakout rooms. These are your chances to speak Spanish uh, with your peers. And also these are your, Spanish, your chances to get to know some other people. We've known uh, about how to say how we are, como estamos, who we are, quienes somos, where we are, donde estamos, and something about uh, our classroom community. Um, we've learned a few phrases and protocols which are going to be useful uh, for the semester, um, both vocabulary words that, that you, can, uh, you can use and a little bit I hope about you have a sense of, of how things, how things will, will go on in the weeks to come. And we looked at the Spanish alphabet and pronunciation. That was a first go through. We'll be, we'll be retur returning to that um, next week and in the weeks ahead too. Um, your tareas, your homework, what you have to do for next time. Um, there's a little survey on Canvas. Um, please take that. That gives me a sense of where you're coming from in the sense of um, uh, have you done any Spanish before? What are your expectations? What are your hopes? What are your fears? It's a chance for you. No one else gets to see this. It's a chance for you to um, tell me what you what what need what what you need to tell me so that I can help you um, uh, uh, as your as your professor. Um, uh, read ahead in chapter one, and. Uh, you'll be able to start the mind tap exercises for the first week. I don't think that's actually available right now this second, but um, they will be soon. Oh, I'll just go back. I, there's also a discussion board. You can introduce yourself to everyone uh, there. And um, again, there's lots more activities, especially online in this mind tap thing. Like here's one, for instance, activity 1.5, which is a, where, which is a, a place to um, a, a place to go over some of the things that we've done today. So you go to courses, you find your course. Again, many, so many of you will be very familiar with this, but some of you may not be. Oh, why is it so slow? Okay, here we are. Here we are. Um, come on. And uh, okay, let me let me get it to uh, let's see, move you around. Okay. I need to get it to student view. So this is what you guys see, which is a little bit different from what I see. Okay. You get my uh, email. Uh, oh, and office hours. So I basically, I'm going to do office hours uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, more or less after the class. I'm going to go grab some lunch first. Um, but otherwise, I'll, when I grab some lunch, come back uh, at one o'clock on both Tuesdays and Thursdays at this same link, this same link that we're using now. Um, Maria Fernandez got office hours um, on Mondays, uh, Monday afternoon, and the, there's her Zoom link. Uh, this is the PDF of the syllabus, um, which again has got much more information. Uh, then to get to this, uh, to, to get to the textbook, the mind that go to the modules, we'll, we'll go, you can either go, go to the book or I'm, I'm gonna do this, it's more or less the it's it's anyway, it's the same kind of the same material. If you click this, I think the first time you do this, okay, yes, that's what it'll do, okay? It, um, it asks you if you want to do the free trial, buy it now, or verify your purchase. Um, so that's how you get into that, but I don't want to do that because I've already, I've already had access to this. Okay, so now I have to figure out what I have to do as an instructor. Well, actually, I, I do it a different way. Let me let me do it this way. I've got a bookmark somewhere. I have too much going on. Okay, here we are. This is my instructor access, access, but it will it will give you the same things as I'll be able to show you. Don't even spell my name. All right. All right, and then I got this. Okay, I'm gonna to go to that. Let's see, someone said, put something in the chat. All right, okay, let's, uh, 
That's uh, only if I remember. Blah, 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 blah. All right, so um, so this is your uh, this is a screen that you should mostly see. It should be there's probably different things I get to see this stuff over here that you don't need to bother with. Oh, but it even stays there. Okay, um, at the bottom of the page here is is the book um, divided by chapters, and it tells you what it corresponds to the print textbook. Um, but so again, we're not doing this whole book. Uh, we're doing half the book, and the other half gets done in uh, in Spanish 102, which you can take uh, next semester. There's a few um, there's a few appendices that um, that are useful, and I'll talk about those. You've got some pronunciation practice. Um, that might be so a good again. This is not for part of the assessment. But but this might be some of the stuff that you can do, and I'll see if you've done it, and and that that can be part of the ways in which you get that extra participation grade. Again, this is not the only way you can get that extra participation grade, but if you do these kind of practices, I see it, and I'm like, okay, that's that's you know that that's part of what you can offer me to show that you're doing this what we're calling asynchronous participation. Um, then I actually think that the easiest way to do it is to do, use this calendar way. And then you can see what you'd have to do each week. So week one is this sort of introduction. This is now. There's, you know, there's not a lot to where you're just being introduced to the course and so on. Um, but next week, uh, you've got um, you've got a series of of, uh, of uh, activities that you have to do that does count towards the grade, right? This is part of the eight percent that you get. And they get unlocked at various times. I don't decide this, in fact. So from the 12th, when is the 12th? Is that uh, today's? Okay, this is math. So I'm not saying, okay, Friday, Sunday. The 12th is Sunday, right? So from, from the 12th, um, uh, you can do these. Uh, you can do these, the, these various activities that, that go towards, that, that are part of what you are required, right? They're not the sort of supplementary participation things. Something else in the chat. Um, okay, the, uh, that's Bonaventure about the e e email me or um, or or Fernanda, and, and we'll try to figure out individual things. I think that you may have bought the thing outside of Canvas. I I don't know. This is new to me. I'm, but I, I will find solutions for you. Okay, I will find solutions for you and for anyone else who need solutions.